Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. Today we're diving into Unreal Engine 5 and I'll be showing you how to create a basic gameplay ability system, otherwise known as GAS, using only blueprints. If you're new to GAS or working mainly with blueprints, this tutorial is perfect for you. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a third person template in blueprints and I call this project GAS Blueprints and I'll hit create. So when the project opens, I'm going to head over to edit and open up plugins. So I'm just going to look for the gameplay ability and make sure this is checked. And I'll hit restart now to restart my project. And now that our project is restarted, let's create our first ability. So I'm just going to right click in the content browser and select a blueprint class. And in the search type gameplay ability under all classes. And I'll select gameplay ability and hit select. And I'm going to call this something like BP underscore fire ball ability. And now let's open up the newly created gameplay ability blueprint. So inside this blueprint, we can define the abilities logic. For example, we'll make a simple fireball ability. And I'm also going to add some free assets into my, into my project. So I'm going to head over to the free section of the marketplace and look for permanently free. And I want to look for this VFX realistic starter VFX pack volume two. So I'll just go ahead and add this to my project. So in my BP fireball ability, I'm just going to look for a fire animation. And what I'm going to do is uh, for this tutorial, I'm just going to cast to my third person blueprint character. And for the object, I'm going to get player character. And now all we're going to do is just spawn this fireball or fire actor component um, in front of my character. And it'll probably look a little awkward depending on how it's spawned and what it looks like. So I'm going to be actually using the flamethrower particle effect, which just kind of goes straight up. So it's going to look like uh, my, head's on, my head's on fire. But that's totally fine with me. And now after casting from our to our third person, now after casting our BP third person character, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna spawn the actor from a class. And I don't have an actor here, so what I need to do is make one. So I'm gonna head back to my third person map content, right click, create a blueprint class of an actor, call this BP underscore fireball, even though it's not really a fireball, it's more like a flamethrower. And now in here, I'm just going to add a cascade particle system. And I'm just going to add that BP flamethrower so we can see the flamethrower. And for this in my event graph, you can make any modifications that you want here, but I'm just going to set a lifespan of something like, um, let's do two seconds. And now that's pretty much all we need for our BP actor fireball. And I'll head back and select that BP underscore fireball. And now as a third person character, I'm just going to get my and now for, as a BP third person character, I'll get actor location and just return the value of this to the spawn transformation. And I actually want to right click this spawn transformation split struct pin. And then I'm going to have the return value go to the spawn transformation location and I'll hit compile and save. And now what we're pretty much doing here is inside our gameplay ability of fireball. We're just telling that whenever we whenever we use this ability, it's going to be spawning this actor wherever our actor location is. And I'll head over to glass default and I want to create an ability tag called ability dot fireball. You can name this whatever you want. It is just a string, but I want to show you that we can call our abilities in two ways, the class itself and using tags. So I created one here called ability dot fireball and I'll just set it to ability dot fireball here. So I compile save and now over in my BP third person character, in the event graph where the begin play is, I need to actually just add the ability. So at the end of my apping, add mapping context, I'm just going to type in give ability and I'll select this one. I don't want to activate it just yet, but I'll select this one, which is the ability system. And the class that we are going to add to this is going to be that fireball, the fireball ability like so. And then right below this, I'll just add a debug key F. And whenever I click F, so I just want to try activate ability. I just want to try activate ability and I can do it by class or by tag. So I'll do by class at first, and I'm going to select that BP fireball ability and I'll hit compile and save. And when I go back to my map and click play and click F, you're going to see that my character, it spawns that fire ability on my character for two seconds because that's what we set the lifespan to. And now I'm going to head back and actually just show you what it is if we use tags. So if I go back to my BP third person character and I'll just un unpin this execution pin and I'll drag it out and try activate ability by tag. And then I'll select this. And what I'm going to do is just select a gameplay tag container. So I'll right click this promote to a variable and I'll call this fireball tag. 
And now while fireball tag is selected, I need to compile this to edit the default value. So I'll hit compile and I'm going to select that ability dot fireball tag. And then I'll hit compile and save. And when I go back and hit F, you'll see that it works exactly how it worked as if we were calling by class. And me personally, I prefer using tags because I think tags will be a bit more organized in the long run. And it's just easier um, to, and it's just easier for me to see how my tags are as opposed to just every remembering every single class available. But that is a very brief and short example of the ability system in blueprints. So it's not as complex. So this scenario isn't as complex as the C++ one I created earlier, but so this scenario isn't as complex as the C++ one I created before on my channel, but um, C++ can look complicated at first, but the setup will save you an immense amount of time in the long run. But that doesn't mean you can't do this in blueprints. You are totally fine with just getting away with doing all gas work in blueprints. I personally, I'm not too sure if I would recommend that just yet. I know there isn't that much documentation regarding this, but this is a really, really powerful system for developers to use um, in trying to scale up and create a modular framework. Thanks for watching Code of the Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching Intro to Gas Using Blueprint.